over there. Get on up. Everybody right there. Get into it. Everybody right there. Get involved. Everybody get. And welcome to the public good. I'm here today with Jim Wagner and John Mudi of the Communication Workers of America and Reverend Kirk Lovenstein from the Coalition for Economic Justice. Um, so Jim, can you start off by telling us a little bit about the current struggle for high-speed broadband internet? Sure. Uh, the struggle continues and the fight will continue until we're able to get uh, the high-speed broadband service files universally deployed uh, across this state, affording every residence and business access to the state-of-the-art network uh, that Verizon has. And in terms of where it's located in Buffalo um, and in the surrounding communities, where are we lacking Fios and where is it already present? Well, right now, uh, we're lacking it right here in the city of Buffalo. And we're not going to settle until we get a commitment from the company to build out right here in the city. Community of Orchard Park, areas of Amherst, Lackawanna, West Seneca, uh, they have access right now. And, you know, the FCC ruled recently that high-speed broadband is essential, uh, meaning that uh, it's needed. And uh, access to fresh drinking water is essential, and we all have it. And should happen. So we believe that uh, if we want to support true social and economic justice across each and every one of our communities, then access to high-speed broadband is necessary in order to uh, deliver on that statement. Oh, excellent. Thanks. Um, and the CWA was also uh, very involved in the Verizon strike that happened in April. Um, John, can you tell us a little bit about what happened there, as well as the forms of support that you saw in that action? Sure. Uh, after almost a year of negotiating with uh, Verizon, uh, the National CWA Union decided to call a strike. We don't like to call a strike. It's the, the last thing we want to do is put our members in a position like that. However, most of our members, a good majority of our members, were prepared uh, they, they, to prepare for it for over a year. When we did hit the street, uh, the outpouring of support across Western New York, even up and down the East Coast, was phenomenal. And, uh, labor organizations from all over Western New York came out to support us. Uh, we had our community allies, such as CEJ and others, come out and support us. And we had just regular, ordinary consumers come out and support us and uh, supply us with water and other things that we needed. And uh, Reverend, you uh, were part of the organizing group that created the prayer vigil around this uh, action. Could you tell us a little bit about why you found that to be an important thing to do? Sure. I mean, uh, as a religious leader, wherever people are hurting, wherever there's uh, you know pain and struggle, that's where we need to be. Um, the idea of praying with your feet is really crucial to me. And so, I mean, a way that you can pray with your feet is to be on that picket line, uh, to be having conversations with, you know, with those employees who, who have been affected by this. I mean, I talked to a guy who said, you know, depending on how long the strike goes, I've got a kid that's in college and I might not be able to send him back. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and that was, you know, it was story after story. I mean, that's just one of many. Uh, you know, it's important as religious leaders to be, you know, in difficult spots. Um, that's what that's what the, the Christian tradition, which I'm in, calls us to be. Um, and so, yeah, it's so imperative to be on that strike line. Excellent. Well, thank you all so much for sharing with us today, um, and we look forward to following your work in the future. Thank you. Everybody over there, get on up. Everybody right there, get into it. Everybody right there, get involved. Everybody get. Yeah.